Hello, puppy. What are you doing? Say good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good boy. Have you had your morning uh, constitution, Reginald? You have. Aren't you clever? Come on then. Go and see those chickens. So we provided a new water hello bird. A new watering station today. So this one that we had previously kinda works. But uh, they didn't. Some of the chicks didn't quite understand how it functioned. So instead we've installed this automatic watering bowl and it's refilled with a barrel just behind there and the rainwater from the roof. Quite ingenious I think. What are you doing in there ladies? Are you laying my breakfast? So if we just quickly go over here and have a look you'll see that on the floor, hello madam, we've got all the spent grain from yesterday spread out quite thin actually. This will be gone tonight. It's absolutely amazing how quickly they get through it all. There was a good bucket full. This is our cockerel, believe it or not. Normally quite a friend with a bugger. As you can see he's not running away too fast. There we go. <laughs> yeah he's gonna start crowing soon I would imagine. Aren't they handsome though, these roadies. Road Island Reds. Here's his harem coming to join him. Anyway, enough cocking around. Let's go back to work. We're in, excuse the noise, we've got the pilot kit kicking off and the chillers behind us. I'm just seeing if we've got a Krausen yet on there. Uh, oh we do. So this is the Lacto, well it's not Lacto is it, this is the uh, Philly Sour. So she's working, she's doing a thing and then straight off the bat we've got the Verdant. The verdant's already kicking ass and we've got a little bit of pressure so we just bent that pressure up hopefully it doesn't create us too many problems but it looks to me like the temperature is doing quite well we're a little bit high on FV1 so the Philly Sour's up to 27 I'll have to have a look make sure that that uh, that cooling is working correctly and I've got the right pipes all wired up and what have you. But that should be chilling by now. So a little bit of investigation before we carry on with today's brew day, which I'll talk about shortly. So I've got to the bottom of the problem. Head height is still too high even though we've got those other pumps in there. I think it's probably due to the restriction of 3 8 internal diameter pipe. So what I might do on the supply side is take a 15 mil pipe from there and we'll push that up to the manifold here so it's got a little bit more pressure and then hopefully that will help it in the future uh, but fail that all I've done is put some uh, stemmed 90s on the top here to reduce the head height somewhat and then I've cut the, I've cut the uh, pipe to suit so we don't have these big tails scooping up and around the top and then what I've done is I've connected these two pipes together, allowed the flow to commence, and then obviously once it starts going back down the return leg, it creates a siphon of sorts, which then helps relieve the head pressure on the other side that the uh, pump has to deal with. So it's being pulled down on one side as well as being pushed up on the other side, which seems to work, seems to work fine. No problem in the control box, so that can be closed up. The temperature is already coming down and if we go and have a look at the 
data we logged on the tilt then we can see from uh, there we go look that's the SG data and you can see the, the temperature kind of the red line there and that's not very big but it starts to skyrocket so if we look at the temperature two o'clock in the morning we were still only around 23 24 degrees it only kind of reached 26 at 7.17 this morning so it's 9 o'clock now so it's only had 2 hours at 26.1 degrees Celsius it's only had 7, 4, 5, 6, 7 it's only had 5 hours above 25 degrees so I don't think that's going to be a massive issue we caught it it's just kicking off the fermentation as you can see it really wasn't doing anything before then quite a long lag phase on this Philly sour yeast so hopefully we've caught that and there should be no detrimental effect we could have fermented, I almost fermented it at 25 to be honest so I don't think this is going to be a huge problem I just reined it back into 22 because I th thought it was more a convenient temperature for my larger tanks to handle in the future so, you may be asking, what are we brewing today, Harry? Well, today, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack on things, I reckon. So, we're brewing a sour, albeit not with any bacteria. We're brewing a big, punchy, uh, milkshake-style New England IPA. Smells fantastic by the way. That's also got a different yeast in it, it's got the verdant yeast in there. And I also bought the Voskovirk yeast, which I would like to play with. And it got me thinking. Immediately with these yeasts, you start thinking of fruity beers or big punchy IPAs. And with the summer months arriving, I kind of didn't want to do any dark beers. And something that I've always found really difficult to brew are the Lager Pilsner style beers. So I thought why not have a little bit of an experiment and we'll use the Kvirk Voss fermented at around ale temps about 20, 22 degrees C and see if we can't brew a Lager style beer with, uh, with this Norwegian strain of yeast. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But I did think that obviously the Voss lends itself to kind of orangey characteristics, citrusy flavours. So if it does produce any of these esters, then, you know, it ain't going to be a million miles off what you class as acceptable to have with a lager anyway. We've all seen the Corona and Lime. Don't go there. Look at the trouble Corona's caused us over the past year or two. But, you know, joking aside, I think it's probably a a style of beer that could lend itself to this uh, this Kvirk yeast but brewed at lower temperatures to keep the ester production down and uh, well normally we're waiting a long time for lagers to be produced aren't we let's see if we can bang one out in a week might need some conditioning time after fermentation but we'll pretty much know where we are so I just need to check my stock see if I've got any lager or pills in the malt in if I don't we're gonna have to pump with the extra pale eye Malt. I think I'm going to go 100% on the uh, the pale malt, the base malt for this beer and really let the yeast shine through and then I'll have a look if we've got some Howard Tower or some SARS hops. We'll ping that into about 15-20 IBUs and see where, see where this whole thing takes us. So I've had a look on the system, we don't have any Lager malt in stock, it says I do, but I've checked and it's not there, so I must have used it in something in the past. Uh, bummer, I guess we're going to have to use pale. So we're going to weigh out 100% pale malt, extra pale malt, which is 11 kilograms. And then we're going to be adding 20.8 IBUs, oh I forgot to put, a, I want to put a Whirlpool edition of 15 grams in there as well. I've forgotten to do it. So we're going to do 20.8 IBUs of Halatau Mittelfrö 
and then a protoflop tablet at 15 minutes that first edition is 60 minutes by the way and then we're going to do another 15 grams or 1.9 IBUs of Palatawa at 5 minutes and then I'm going to go upstairs and print this off again because I've forgotten to do it I want to then chill to 80 and do another 15 gram addition at 80 degrees for 15 minutes just to allow the troop to settle out in the boil kettle a little bit as well as grabbing a little bit of that hop aroma from the whirlpool then we're going to transfer into an FV and we're going to pitch uh, probably under pitch a little bit around 25 grams or half a gram per litre of the Vos Kvirk yeast from Lalamand and we're shooting for a target gravity of 10 45.3 to give us an ABV hopefully of 4.8 if we hit our final grav of 10.09 so fingers crossed let's weigh out the grains and let's get stuck in so 11 kilos of pale I'm going to need my apron on before I do this, otherwise I'll be going out. Just keeps all the grain dust and all the, uh, all the splashes and sugars off my shirt or my jacket. Which is handy. Right, let's plug in the scales. on with 11 kilograms, I wonder what's in this bag. Sixteen point four. So it'd make more sense for me to take out 5.4 kilos and then just tip the bag into the mash tun. from behind because I know that's the way the ladies like it. Try not to make too much dust today. We've got a bag. When doing this with the buckets, there's no real way of avoiding all the dust coming into the air. But with a bag, you can allow it to come out without having to fall. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? So the grain is in. We'll start adding the strike water now. So we've completed a 75 minute mash and a 10 minute mash out up to 70 plus degrees and then transferred. And we are now, well, we're an hour into a 75 minute boil. The alarm is probably going to go off any second now indicating that we are ready to start the first hop edition and yeah it's all gone smoothly one thing I do have to remember to do is to change those timings because I've still got it saying 60 minutes on the brew sheet therefore 
We may over boil a little bit because there's an extra 30 minutes of boil time meaning that our volumes may be a little bit off because I didn't adjust it on the sheet. We'll see. And while that has been boiling for 60 minutes, well I've had a visit from a gentleman called Ken and he's provided me with a new television screen and well what can I do in 60 minutes? I can get a TV on the wall in 60 minutes that's what. I've hooked it up, I've just been on the GUI interface with the uh, Raspberry Pi over the Wi-Fi to try and change the screen resolution. So we're just waiting to see now if the Raspberry Pi boots up correctly and it displays all the tilts for us because it was still set in the old 1440 screen resolution for the smaller television over there which is a bit in the dust. Whereas this one it's a little bit bigger but it's doing stuff so I'm hoping that I don't have to pause the camera and any second now it's going to flash up with the tilt information it certainly looks like it's about to come on Mr Raspberry Pi don't let us down I can see you're only seconds away it says tilt Pi in the top left hand corner and there we go the screen res is a little bit small still So we're at the chilling stage and if you just look at that, now that is a crystal clear, if I've ever seen one, transfer, in fact it's probably the clearest transfer I think I've ever done. So it's coming out at 19 degrees, a little bit more hazy over this side because it got that first hit of trope of course, but I'm quite impressed with it. So 75 minute boil, 15 minute hop stand. 75 minute mash, 100% pale malt, uh, Halatau Mittel for hops, and we're going to go in a minute with the Kvirk Voss yeast at half a gram per litre just to stress it out a little bit, I think. Just stress it out a little bit. Here it is. So we're on Friday, the Philly Sour has dropped 10 points. It's not really a very exciting fermentation, however, the verdant has gone absolutely cuckoo. In fact, we've had to incorporate a blow off and uh, have a bit of a clean up this morning because it has shot its load all over the next fermenter. So, lesson learned. But yeah, you can definitely see it's doing its thing for sure. So massive crowding on this and yeah, fermenting away really nicely. It was a big beer though, I mean we're talking 1070 or something. And then yesterday's lager style beer, well the Kvirk has really gone to town on that. Under pitched, 25 grams which is half a gram per litre and you can see we've got somewhat of a vortex going on in there. This Kvirk yeast is a workhorse. So I'm very interested to see how this turns out. Again, blow off not required yet, but I've put it on there as a precaution, just in case it decides to go silly, which it may just do. 